Kitchen. Today, by request, I'm going to be making crab bisque. And this is a recipe of which there are a multitude of variations available in cookbooks and online. Some of them are quite detailed and lengthy to make and others are quite simplistic. Mine, you're gonna find is somewhere in between the two of those. But as I go through this recipe, I'll provide you some additional tips and tricks that you can use to simplify this recipe even further and also that you might find more convenient. But let's start with what we're going to need in order to make this recipe. To begin with, you are going to need some crab meat. Now you can buy uh, pre-shelled crab or you can even use lump crab out of a can. But here I'm using a Dungeness crab. This is a crab that I had previously purchased. It has previously been frozen. And if you notice, it is missing its legs. That's because in a previous video, I made crab louie. If you'd like to see that video, be sure to check out the link up above, and I'll also link the recipe at the very end of this video. So be sure to stick around for that. Nonetheless, you are going to need a crab or crab meat. And I also have here the crab shells that I previously um, harvested when I made the crab louis. And I have some of that leftover crab meat as well. So setting those things aside, you're also going to need some butter, tomato paste, and a bay leaf. In addition to that, you're going to need the trinity of vegetables because we are going to be making a miracle. And for that, you're going to need some chopped celery, carrots, and leeks. Now this celery here, a celery that I've previously diced and frozen, this is going to get reduced and cooked down. Here I have some smoked paprika, a pinch of cayenne pepper, some black pepper, freshly ground, sea salt, and some dried tarragon. I also am using some leeks. These leeks here that I have are actually leek tops, which I've previously frozen as well. And these I am going to be putting in the bisque to draw out some of that oniony flavor, but I will be removing these before serving. So keep that in mind. You can also use onions in your recipe if you prefer. A uh, yellow onion is traditionally what would be used. In addition to that, you're going to need heavy cream. You're going to need some dry vermouth, or you can use dry white wine as well. You're going to need some tomatoes. These tomatoes that I'm using here are cherry tomatoes. I prefer to use cherry tomatoes when I'm making a crab bisque because I find the flavor to be more robust and have a lot more depth to it. And cherry tomatoes, I find most times to be less acidic than a traditional slicing tomato. You're going to need some celery and carrots. One other item not shown here that you will need is a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Now there were some requests about how to process the body of the crab. If you have a soft shell crab, you can cut into that soft shell crab with some heavy kitchen shears. In my case, this is not that soft of a body. I could probably cut into it with these shears here, but instead what I'm going to be using is a mallet. So I'm just going to give this a quick whack with the mallet and I'm gonna break that open and then I'll show you how to extract the meat from here. I do wanna warn you though, before I break into this, that if you are squeamish, that you may want to skip ahead a bit um, because the inside of a crab is not exactly that appetizing um, until you get it cleaned out. So bear with me, I'm gonna crack this open and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you immediately crack it open and then I will show you how to process the meat. So please skip ahead to the marker listed down below on the screen and that way you can skip all the um, not so pleasant parts if you like. When you first break into the crab, you're going to be presented with all of this coagulation of its body fluids. And that part can be quite um, grotesque to look at for some people. And underneath that, you're going to find its gills, essentially. These pieces right here are not edible. So I'll be removing these finger-like pieces, as well as this membrane and all of this coagulation 
and then I'll show you how to process the meat of the crab. In order to get the crab meat out of the body, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to break this body further in half. And inside of that, you're going to find many small cavities, and this is where your scissors will come in handy too. But inside of the body of the crab, you're going to find many small cavities, and these cavities are filled with meat. So I'm just basically spreading this apart here, and then I'm just gonna pull out that meat and making sure that I don't get any hard bits of that inner shell in and amongst the meat. Now you do wanna save these shell pieces because you're going to be roasting them along with the other shells that you have reserved from the crab legs and the outer shell of the crab itself. So it really won't take all that long to pull all of this crab meat out of here. It just a few minutes. So like I said, tedious, but not time consuming. So I'm gonna do this and then I'll be right back. Here you can see the amount of crab. This is about, oh, I don't know, a cup worth of crab meat here and the leftover shells just from the inside of the crab body itself. I'm gonna add those to our other crab shells and then we're going to roast those so that we can make our fish stock. We're gonna go ahead and take our shell of the main body of the crab and we're gonna break this up into fairly small pieces, not too small, mind you, um, but we're going to then roast these in the oven. And the reason that we're doing this is, is because you're going to need some fish stock for your bisque. So I'm gonna make my own and the best way to do this is to just take all of those crab shells that you have um, preserved or reserved rather, and you're gonna lay those out on a baking sheet. Mine I have lined with foil. I'm gonna lay those out. And then we're gonna take our celery. This is just two stalks of celery. I'm just gonna throw those right in with that. We're also going to take our carrot and we're gonna throw that on there as well. Now, the vegetables, keep in mind, are not actually going to roast very long in with these crab shells. And the reason for that is, is that the crab shells are so delicate that you don't want to roast these for very long. But we are roasting these for about 10 minutes in an oven that is about 400 to 450 degrees. I know that's a big temperature range, but I want you to realize that you need to keep a close eye on these while they roast. If you don't keep an eye on them, there is the high probability that you're going to burn them or that they're just going to completely disintegrate upon you. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put these on my or in my oven and let these roast for about 10 minutes. Now I'm using my wood stove as my oven here and I'm just actually going to put these on the stove top and I'm going to let that roast for about 10 minutes like I said. While our crab shells are roasting for the fish stock, I am gonna go ahead and prepare our tomatoes. And I'm just taking the cherry tomatoes. I've already pre-washed these and I'm just going to quarter them. And you can use other tomatoes if you like and seed them. But again, I prefer to use cherry tomatoes. So all I'm going to do is cut these into quarters and then set them aside for when we actually make our bisque. Now you could make your fish stock well in advance of preparing the bisque. And in many cases, you'd want to actually do it the day before. It doesn't actually take that long to make the stock itself. Making it should take you about, oh, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes. And that's after you've roasted your shells, of course. And you can use lobster shells, you could use um, shrimp shells, whatever you have on hand. You can also use fish bones and fish heads, things like that to make your fish stock. I am of course just using the crab shells that I have available to me today. And the reason I'm roasting the shells is because it's going to intensify the overall flavor of the crab shells themselves. You can 
entirely skip that step if you want, just the flavor won't be quite as intense. And when I say intense, I'm not talking, um, you know, overly bearingly fishy. What I'm talking about is depth. I'm talking about it won't have as much depth to the stock um, if you don't do this. You can skip making your own fish stock if you want to save yourself the trouble. And instead, you can buy pre-made fish stock, seafood stock, if you will. Or what you can do is use clam juice. Now that our tomatoes are all cut up, our shells should be done roasting. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out of the oven and then we will begin to make the stock. So here we have our roasted shells. They really haven't changed color at all. If anything, all it's done is help to bring out some of the juices that are in there, help to liven up that flavor a bit. And like I said, it is going to add some depth to the overall finished product of this. The vegetables really haven't done much, but begin to soften up. If anything, they really haven't roasted much, but it does help to bring out some of the flavors of those as well, as opposed to just boiling them in the stock itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these into my saute pan. Now you can use any pan of your choice. I'm just using this pan because it is the perfect size for what I'm about to do. And because I have a colander that I'm setting inside of it. And that colander is going to allow me to lift all of those ingredients out and be left with the juices of the stock itself um, without too much of the debris in here. So to begin with, again, I'm just going to layer everything into this colander. And I did forget to mention that you will also need um, a fine mesh sieve for this recipe, for both the stock and for the bisque itself. Um, if you don't have a fine mesh sieve, you can also use um, just a colander and some cheesecloth. If you have any juices on your baking tray when you're done, be sure to add those as well. Now that I have my shells and vegetables in my pot here, I'm gonna go ahead and cover with water. So I'm just adding enough water to cover this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in one cup of dry vermouth. You can also use dry white wine if you prefer or have it on hand. It could be cooking wine. In my case, I just use table wine. And then I'm also going to add in some herbs and spices. One of the ingredients that I had forgotten to mention was that you're going to need some peppercorns. So I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of uncracked peppercorns. I'm gonna add in my bay leaf. I'm gonna bring this up to just below a boil and then I'm going to reduce the heat and keep it just at a simmer. You don't want this to come to a boil and you definitely don't want to stir this because doing so is going to muddy up the stock. If you keep it at just below a boil, what you're going to find is that you're going to wind up with a clear, rich stock in order to use for this dish as well as many others. You're going to see that there are going to be some um, foam arise to the top of your stock. That foam is the impurities that are coming out of the crab itself. No need to worry. If you have enough water on here where you can scape, scrape that away, great, do so. Um, otherwise, just let it sit there. And when you remove your colander of your crab and vegetables, that foam is gonna come out with it. And anything that's left on the top after that, you can scrape away at that moment. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to, like I said, just below a boil. I'm gonna put the lid on it. And then I'm going to reduce that heat and let it just simmer for about 30 minutes. Again, though, you can use pre-made seafood stock or clam juice in place of doing this. This will save you about an hour to two in your overall prep time. The stock has been simmering for about 30 minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lid. Now, I don't have any of the foam on top, and that's probably because I rinsed my crab really well before preparing it and also I had roasted those shelves like I had mentioned. So the stock has been simmering away for about 30 minutes now and I am gonna go ahead and remove the lid and then I'm gonna pull that colander full of crab shells and vegetables out of this pot. Now I'm using just a little pot grabber to do this and if you're interested in purchasing one yourself, I will have a link to this in the description of this video. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drain that and I'm gonna set that 
off to the side here. And then I'm gonna take another pot and inside of that pot, I'm gonna place my sieve. This sieve has an open mesh to it. And so I am actually gonna go ahead and line this with some cheesecloth. And if you're not familiar with cheesecloth, it is a loosely woven cloth that is commonly used in kitchen preparations. And I do want this folded over a couple of times. I'm just gonna lay that in there. And that's gonna help to catch any impurities or bits of shell that might still be in the stock itself. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that directly into the sieve. And in here, you can see that there are fine bits of shell that have been left behind, and I don't want those to go into the final product. And there you have it. We have some nice, clean, clear broth. I say clear, but it does have color to it, but it's not muddy and it will work out just perfectly for our bisque. To begin making the bisque, you're going to need your large Dutch oven or a large pot in order to cook this. To start with, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter to my Dutch oven, and then I'm going to add my trinity of vegetables. Again, this is chopped celery, carrot, and leeks. Now you do want your vegetables and the butter to brown in here. That is gonna, again, help to develop the flavors of the bisque and provide you some depth in your soup. Now that our vegetables have browned, we're gonna go ahead and add in some flour, and we're gonna do this gradually until everything has come together. Now that we've added in the flour and it is browned just slightly, we're going to begin adding in ladlefuls of our stock. And this is creating a roux. And all together, we're gonna add about two cups of this broth. Now you wanna do this gradually and you wanna make sure that you're stirring constantly so that you don't wind up with a clumpy soup, if you will. Now, granted, I will be straining this, so it's not like it really matters in this instance, but if ever you were doing this for another soup, you would wanna make sure that you're stirring and doing it ever so gradually so that you don't wind up with lumps. The rest of our stock, I'm gonna to set to the side. I'm gonna let that cool, and then I will be uh, freezing that. You can also can that and have that for many months down the road. Next, I'm going to add in all of our cherry tomatoes and those leek tops. And I'm also going to add in about two tablespoons of tomato paste. And to this, I'm going to add in the remainder of our spices and herbs. So in here, I have about half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black peppercorns, an eighth of a teaspoon or a pinch of cayenne pepper, and then about one teaspoon of dried tarragon. And then we're just gonna let this simmer away again for about another 20 to 30 minutes and let all of those flavors incorporate, let those tomatoes soften up. And once that's done, I'll be right back to show you what's next. The bisque has been simmering for about 30 minutes now, and I've gone ahead and shut off the heat. I'm gonna take this lid off. And as you can see, I have the other pot sitting next to it. I've taken all the stock and put that in the freezer. I have also put the sieve back into the pot itself. And I'm gonna begin by labeling spoonfuls of this through the sieve. I've not put cheesecloth in it this time, mind you, because I'm not as concerned about getting every little element out of the soup this time. But before I do that, I am actually gonna come through here and I'm gonna pull out two or three ladlefuls of the tomatoes. And the reason that I'm doing this is I personally like to have bits of tomato in my bisque. I know a lot of people don't want bits of the skin and the meat of the tomato in their soup, but I personally like it. So I'm just gonna reserve a few ladlefuls of that. And now I'm gonna begin by 
pouring this in through the sieve. If you trust yourself, you could pick up the pot and dump it in. I don't trust myself that much. Um, so I'm gonna do it ladleful by ladleful. And then I'm going to just take my ladle and gently push down on the tomatoes in here and get all the excess liquid out of the sieve and into the pot below. One of the reasons I'm pushing this through a sieve is because you don't really want all those tomato seeds in your bisque. To have a little bit of the skin and the pulp in there is one thing, but you don't really want a soup that is full of seeds. And again, I don't want those big pieces of leek tops in there either. And I'm gonna go ahead and return this pot to our heat source. I'm gonna add in the reserved uh, bits of tomato and the juices that were accompanying it. And I'm gonna turn the heat back on and I want that heat at a medium, medium low. I don't want this to come up too fast or too high of a heat. And once this begins to simmer again, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in our crab. Now, I do have the crab claws that I had saved from the crab louis. I'm gonna set those to the side because I don't wanna throw those in the pot. And the reason I'm not putting the crab in before this point is because this crab is already cooked and I don't wanna cook it any further. I just really wanna bring this up to temperature. So once I begin to see bubbles coming to the surface here, then I'm gonna go ahead and add in our crab meat. Now you could save some of the crab meat if you like and dollop that on top of your bowl of bisque, but I'll be serving mine with the crab claws. Now that this has started to come back up to temperature, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in about a cup of cream. And then I'm just gonna stir that around and incorporate that. One last thing that I'm going to do before dishing this up is I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of cognac. This is completely optional, but it's just gonna liven up the soup just a little bit, and I'm not adding that much. About half a tablespoon to three quarters of a tablespoon is all. And remember, the alcohol evaporates as you're cooking it. So you are not gonna get any of the alcoholic effects from the soup, from the vermouth, from the dry wine, or the cognac. As I've demonstrated today, making crab bisque from scratch can be time consuming, but it doesn't have to be. You could actually make a very easy crab bisque by starting with a store-bought tomato bisque and adding crab meat to it. You could also avoid the time and labor involved in shelling your own crab and making your own seafood stock and by using pre-made fish stock. The full recipe can be found in the description box below this video, but no matter how you go about it, I hope that you'll give this recipe a try and let me know in the comments down below how yours turned out. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this bowl of soup and I'll see you on the next one. Until next time, please stay safe and take care and be sure to check out these videos here.